Welcome to Creepy, the best horror storyteller on YouTube. Part 1 It was a dark and stormy night. The rain was pouring down like a waterfall, and the thunder was roaring like a beast. The only light came from the occasional flashes of lightning, which illuminated the deserted streets and the old mansion on the hill. That's where he lived. The Nightmare Architect. The man who could create the most terrifying dreams imaginable and trap his victims in them until they went insane or died. He was a legend, a myth, a mystery. No one knew who he was, where he came from, or why he did what he did. Some said he was a mad scientist, experimenting with the human mind. Others said he was a twisted artist, expressing his dark vision. And some said he was a demon, feeding on fear and suffering. But he was real. And he had a new target. His name was Ethan. He was a young and successful journalist, who had recently moved to the city. He had a knack for finding and exposing the truth, no matter how dangerous or controversial. He had a reputation for being fearless, relentless, and honest. He had a lot of enemies, but he didn't care. He believed in his work, and he loved his life. He had no idea that he was about to lose it all. He had received an anonymous tip about a mysterious mansion on the hill, where strange and horrible things were happening. He was intrigued, and decided to investigate. He drove his car to the foot of the hill, and climbed up the winding road. He reached the gate, which was open. He entered the property, and walked towards the mansion. He saw no signs of life, except for a faint light coming from one of the windows. He approached the door, which was unlocked. He pushed it open, and stepped inside. He wished he hadn't. The mansion was a nightmare. The walls were covered with blood, the floors were littered with bones, and the air was filled with screams. The rooms were filled with grotesque and horrifying scenes, each one more disturbing than the last. Ethan saw people being tortured, mutilated, and killed in the most unimaginable ways. He saw monsters, demons, and ghosts lurking in the shadows. He saw his own worst fears come to life. He tried to run, but it was too late. The door slammed shut behind him, and he heard a voice. Welcome to my nightmare, Ethan. I've been expecting you. It was the nightmare architect. He was watching him from a hidden camera and controlling everything that happened in the mansion. He had chosen Ethan as his next victim, and he had a special plan for him. He wanted to break him, to make him suffer, to make him beg for death. He wanted to make him his masterpiece. He smiled and pressed a button. The nightmare began. Part 2 Ethan was trapped in a nightmare. He tried to escape, but there was no way out. Every door he opened led to another horror, every window he broke was sealed by an invisible force, every scream he uttered was drowned by the laughter of the nightmare architect. He was alone, but not really. He was surrounded by his fears, his regrets, his enemies. He saw the faces of the people he had hurt, betrayed, or exposed in his career. He saw the corpses of his family, friends, and lovers, who had died because of him. He saw the monsters that haunted his childhood, the demons that tormented his soul, the ghosts that followed his steps. He felt pain, terror, guilt, and despair. He felt his sanity slipping away, his will breaking, his hope dying. He felt the nightmare architect's presence, his power, his pleasure. He wanted to give up, to end the suffering, to embrace the darkness. But he couldn't. He had one thing left. One thing that kept him going. One thing that the nightmare architect couldn't take away. His curiosity. He wanted to know who the nightmare architect was, what he wanted, how he did it. He wanted to solve the mystery, to find the truth, to expose the evil. He wanted to do what he did best. He wanted to be a journalist. 
He decided to fight back. He decided to use his skills, his intelligence, his courage. He decided to look for clues, to find patterns, to discover secrets. He decided to challenge the nightmare architect, to confront him, to question him. He decided to turn the nightmare into a story. He started to observe, to analyze, to deduce. He noticed that the mansion was not random, but organized. He realized that the rooms were not chaotic, but thematic. He understood that the scenes were not arbitrary, but symbolic. He saw that the mansion was a puzzle, and he was the key. He followed the clues, he solved the puzzles, he unlocked the secrets. He found hidden passages, secret chambers, and hidden messages. He found the nightmare architect's laboratory, his library, and his diary. He found the nightmare architect's identity, his motive, and his method. He was shocked, he was stunned, he was speechless. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't accept it. He couldn't handle it. The nightmare architect was him. He was the one who created the nightmares, he was the one who trapped the victims, he was the one who enjoyed the suffering. He was the one who had a split personality, he was the one who had a brain tumor, he was the one who had a device that connected his mind to the mansion. He was the one who was insane, he was the one who was evil, he was the one who was dying. He had no idea. He had no memory. He had no control. He had been the Nightmare Architect's masterpiece all along. He had been the Nightmare Architect's nightmare. He collapsed, he cried, he screamed. He woke up. He was in a hospital bed, surrounded by doctors, nurses, and police. He was told that he had been found unconscious in his car, near the mansion on the hill. He was told that he had a brain tumor, that he had been operated on, that he had survived. He was told that he had confessed to being the nightmare architect, that he had revealed his victims, that he had been arrested. He was told that he had a chance to recover, to repent, to redeem. He didn't believe them. He didn't trust them. He didn't care. He knew that it was not over. He knew that he was still in a nightmare. He knew that the nightmare architect was still watching him. He heard a voice. Did you like my story, Ethan? I hope you did. It was my best work yet. But don't worry, it's not the end. It's only the beginning. I have more stories for you. More nightmares for you. More surprises for you. You see, I'm not just your nightmare. I'm your nightmare architect. And I'm always with you. He smiled and pressed a button. The nightmare continued. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more similar horror stories.